how I learned to stop worrying and ignore anomalies. So what will this be about? Um, I will show you what uh, kind of problem uh, I had in mind or what I tried to solve. Um, how did we solve it? How do you use it? How does it work? And then take a look at some alternatives and why didn't you use that, right? So, so um, there's this classical thing, everyone who gets into a new code base will read it and ask, oh, why, why, why? Uh, oh, that's why, okay. So, um, and I'll do it in the same order. Um, so suspend your disbelief. <laughs> um, one thing uh, in these alternatives, I will show some yeah, other libraries that other people have written. Um, I, I do not mean to deprecate those in any way. Um, it's um, uh, everyone has his own use cases, and um, I think um, that these are all valid alternatives um, for other people in other situations. Um, and uh, so, please uh, don't uh, take this as use this, don't use that. Um, Okay, so what kind of problem am I trying to solve? Um, if you think about, oops, if you think about pure CRUD, uh, create, um, uh, request, update, delete, um, then you only have single failures. Uh, uh, give me that, no, I can't. Um, put this there, no, you, no, I can't. Okay, uh, that's uh, quite simple. Your services use, um, connected data. There are multiple possible failures. We have uh, now in the age of microservices, we have other microservices that we call, we have databases, we have streams, we have all kinds of things that can happen. Um, so um, there are many, many um, sources of failure. Um, as one example, when you, are, when you have graph data, so edges and nodes, and now you want to add an edge. Then you must check is there the starting node is there, yeah, the ending node is it there, the, and the edge there there should not already be an edge because then I can't add it, and then we also have uh, yeah network failures, parsing errors at all stages and so on. Um, if you take a look at demo code for something, and it's always quite simple. It always only shows the happy path. So here uh, we have a function that says, okay, connect these nodes, please. You know, so we have uh, some graph and we have uh, two IDs from ID and two ID. And then we get uh, these two nodes and then we add the edge and this returns presumably the edge and we return the ID for that, for example. Um, production code looks a bit different and here I'm just um, expanding the obvious failures. There can be all kinds of other failures like network errors, lower level errors, and so on. Um, and that's um, okay. If um, the starting node doesn't exist, okay, um, then I will have to uh, fail with that. Uh, if the ending node doesn't exist, okay, then I have to fail with something else. And if uh, the edge exists, then okay, then I also have to fail. And then the last part ah, here is the, what I'm actually want, trying to do, right? So this is what's actually happening. Um, this is a bit intricate. This is, as I said, a little simple example. Um, and the question is also, what does fail do? You might think about throwing an error or doing something else or returning something. And um, we want to get rid of this uh, deep nesting and of this, um, okay, if then else, if then else, if then else. This is, um, uh, yeah, um, not very tidy. And typically it is, uh, it is smeared across several functions. And then um, no one can see what's actually happening. So we want to get this, somehow better. I mean, there are languages which say why it's perfect like this. They maybe do an early exit. Uh, 
Yeah. But um, that's still not not very nice because you're always asking, is there an error? Is there an error? Is there an error? Then return minus one yeah, or whatever. Okay, so um, what's the idea? Um, one thing that's quite nice about this failure is we want to return data and we return an anomaly. An anomaly is just, this is kind of definition, it's a value that designates a failure. And um, as an example, um, there's Cognitect Anomalies, which is a library that consists only of a spec and documentation, nothing else. There's no code. Yeah? And it defines a format that might look something like this. Um, you have a um, category, and um, these categories are a closed set, actually, or, yeah. Uh, predefined. Yeah? So you can say, okay, here's an anomaly. This is forbidden what you're trying to do. And you can also give a message, which is also a predefined thing. Okay, you shall not pass. And, but you can also give all kinds of other keys uh, which uh, contain additional information. And the nice thing about this is it's just data. It's not um, an object of some special class. It's not, yeah, it's, it's not, not an exception. It, it, it's not something else. It's, it's just data. We can do whatever we want to do with data. Uh, we can easily identify it. It's, it's a map that has a category. Um, and we can transmit it through channels. Um, Go channels. Uh, we can transmit it all across threads. We can we can even serialize it and um, return it over the network. We can um, give it as JSON to our front end. We can do all kinds of things with it. Um, this um, we we stumbled or we we found this uh, when we were using the Code Detect AWS um, library, which returns such anomalies. And um, these um, um, these categories are really designed with request response in mind. Yeah? So you, you get almost one-to-one -one mapping with HTTP status codes. So, so this is uh, 403, okay? Um, and um, so, um, of course, we designed our own. It's something that you might discuss. You might say, okay, it's not needed, but anyway, we did this. Um, and our format looks like this. Um, it's a vector of um, up to three elements. And the first one is just an indicator which says, okay, this is an anomaly. And this one is then some kind of anomaly. And we actually allow all keywords here. It's um, just something that describes the kind of anomaly. You know, something like uh, if, you, if you were building an, an exception, you would probably put it into the name. Yeah, so this would be an, a forbidden exception. Um, and then um, we can have all kinds of additional data. Um, nice thing is it, it uncouples it from whatever Cognitect had in mind. And it gives us an excuse to be extensible from the beginning because we also want to adapt to Cognitech anomalies. We want to be extensible to that. Uh, and we'll, if we now have such anomalies, yeah, which fail just returns, um, then what do we do with those? And the idea is to make the possibility of anomalies as unobtrusive as possible. Uh, so we don't want to have here, okay, if um, we, we make a let from blah, 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 if from is an anomaly, then do this else. Yeah? So, so we want to make this unobtrusive. We want to let us, we want to, to, to code the happy path. And the other things should uh, go into the background. And so um, we introduce 
conventions. One thing is functions can return anomalies. Yeah, probably with just no fail. Um, and if um, functions can return anomalies, then but functions do not need care to for, for anomalies in their inputs. If you, if, you, if you have a function and you get some input, then you don't want to say, okay, is this maybe an anomaly? And, and first I have to check every all my inputs. Uh, no, that's not your responsibility. We have a, uh, a toolbox which makes the anomalies only bubble out, not in. Yeah, so, and, and we have to make sure at the calling side for, uh, that this is, uh, that this convention holds. And um, the first thing that um, comes to mind with this is NOM. NOM is for, for the case, okay, which just plainly does this convention. Yeah, I want to call a function and make sure that I'm not putting anomalies in. If there's an anomaly, I want to return that directly without calling the function. And to do that, I write instead of this function call, I prepend this little funny norm. And this means roughly, okay, is the first argument an anomaly? Then that's this one. It's the second argument an anomaly? Then return that. And if both are not, then call this function. And of course, a bit more uh, care has to be taken so that there's only once only uh, evaluation and we want to adapt to other anomalies and so on. Um, on the other hand, maybe I want to just check upon some values. Yeah, so I, I want to know, okay, um, I want to make sure that um, my sofa is okay and I want to make sure that my cellar contains drinks and then I can make an evening with my sofa and my cellar, however that looks. Um, if the sofa is an anomaly, then this returns this anomaly. If check drinks is an anomaly, then this returns the anomaly, else it returns the evening. Now, often, we have some kind of coordinating function. Now, this is more or less a design pattern is too much almost. Um, we, we have a, a function that says, okay, this is the task that I'm given. And to do that, I have several steps which I have to take. And to do this, um, what I typically do is have some that form which fetches one thing, it fetches the next, fetches the next, checks something, and then um, returns something. And uh, nom, let nom, this, this term called let nom, um, does propagation. So it uh, runs this code as if it was written with nom. So if node graph of from ID is a uh, an, an, an anomaly um, from will be bound to that anomaly instead of calling node. Same with two. The same here. Now, if from or two returns an anomaly, then this here or this will be an anomaly. And so if that's the case, then edge will be that anomaly. And so here we now only check edge. And if there's an edge, then we say, oh, something uh, bad happened and we call fail with this category and uh, some additional data. And this is the only thing that can happen here, which should not uh, which which does not happen anywhere else because this is the um, the function that connects nodes and this is um, something that uh, where this failure can happen 
And so this is the point where fail is called. Otherwise, we do what we want to do. Um, so this this construct works with propagation. Yeah? So in any case, the body is also called, even if anything here is an anomaly. Often enough, I want to short, short circuit. Yeah? So it's like I. Um, um, if, if anything of this, of, of these, uh, is, is an anomaly, I want to return that. I don't want to check it uh, afterwards. I just want to, if, if from is an anomaly, I don't have to check anything here. I can just return. Um, and um, so this thing with a funny little angle here, with the, which makes it look a bit like an arrow, um, is short circuiting. Um, and so we can skip checking for an anomaly and we can just have this logic which says if there's already an edge then I cannot connect these. So the body is not executed in that case. Um, from our experience with this construct um, about 80 to 90 percent of the usage of norm is this let norm arrow yeah, so we, we just replace, it's, it's, it's more or less a drop in the placement for let, and everything will be okay. Um, at least everything that's in, that happens in the bindings. And um, this yeah, mostly solves anything, or we, we can just ignore the existence of anomalies in these uh, cases. Of course, there are other things. Uh, for example, um, I hope this is okay with the light. Um, um, for example, um, we uh, want to thread through something, and as soon as some intermediate step is an anomaly, we return that uh, anomaly. It's just like some arrow. Uh, and of course, there's also the norm arrow with double, so it's threads last. And um, yeah, I think it's quite obvious uh, what this does. Um, then another construct is with default. Um, the default is um, to recover. If I want to uh, for example, ensure that there's a node. Yeah? And we go here and we say, okay, give me this node. And it says, oh no, that's an anomaly. This node is missing. Then um, A gets bound to that anomaly and we can do something with that anomaly. For example, match, yeah? call, closure call match. Um, this um, just matches on the, um, uh, on the anomaly. And uh, in this case, uh, we want to add it. And uh, if it's some, some other anomaly, we return the anomaly. And, but if the node is already there, then we just return that. And then we don't enter the body. It's more or less the reverse of um, with norm. Now I said that um, we can extend this to other anomalies. And this is a bit funny because we can do this with a kind of predicate-based dispatch. Um, there are two uh, multi-methods. Uh, one, one is abominable, yeah, so we can turn it into an anomaly. And uh, one is adapt. And um, these dispatch on the anomaly. So we did, for example, this is uh, copied from, from the source code of NOM. Um, how did we adapt to Cognitect Anomaly? And uh, we have a predicate which says, is this a map with an anomaly category? Then um, this is an anomaly. And then we dispatch on this predicate and say, if this is an anomaly, then it is abominable. And we also do an adapt and adapt is if this is a cognitive anomaly, then we fail with 
the category and we also add the map where we remove the category um, as the data payload for the for our anomaly and this ret uh, then returns a norm anomaly and all of the constructs that I have shown, you know, this norm, net norm, and so on, so on, so on, they all uh, use these two um, multi methods. They ask, is this abominable? And if it is, then they adapt it. Um, now we come to. Oh, do we do why, why don't we use something else yeah so some um for example exceptions i mean it's obvious we, we, are, we are in java land right we can java the hut and i can make exceptions um, boop, boop, boop. um the existing uh, if, if if you ask um is this an existing node then i can say okay either there is a node or i just throw whatever. And then the handler somewhere will catch this and make something like a response from it. And if uh, I want to have an absent edge, then I can say, OK, give me the edge. And if there's an edge, then I throw and I also, uh, also turn near. Um, and then the handler looks about like this. Um, I It's a bit longer because um, there's uh, Quite a bit of data uh, when we return HTTP responses. And also, so um, here's a handler which says, "Okay, I have some graph store and uh, some ID, and then I get the current graph and um, I connect those nodes, and then I return my answer. And if there's something bad happening, then I catch this and I take the X data and match again on it, and I say, "Okay, if it has the category missing node." Then, um, and oh, I think I made a mistake somewhere, but uh, anyway, uh, and it has a node ID ID. Um, then I will return this as an HTTP response. And if it's a different um, uh, category and some other data, then I return this response and so on and so on. And so it means I can just um, um, do this with exceptions. So why didn't we use that? Um, there are some pros and contras. A pro is it's an existing host feature. We can cancel. We have a non-local transfer of control. So there's little syntactic, syntactic overhead. Yeah? So we can just go anywhere and the handler it, it will handle it. And um, in Clojure, we also have this nice thing that we can just put data into such an exception uh, with uh, X info and X data. Uh, we can get it out. And that's um, also quite nice. Yeah? Um, uh, of course, you have to write this, these kinds of wrapping functions that um, observe your con uh, conventions around throwing such exceptions. Um, but um, yeah, it's, it's a convention. You can do that. Um, it has some problems. And um, for one, it's, uh, exceptions only work on a single stack. If, if you are transferring control to a different thread, if you have a Go channel, if you have uh, something over a network or something like that, then you can throw. You have to transmit something. And it's, uh, yeah, you, you, you have to do additional work. And um, uh, yeah, so it's not trivial to, to just serialize and transmit it. And then you have to receive it and parse it and say, OK, oh, this is an exception. I have to re-throw it or something like that. And um, I think what mostly brought us off this was uh, that it's at odds with referential transparency. Somewhere, something throws an error, and we have a non-local exit and yeah, whatever something happens it's, uh, um, and finally it's expensive um, oh, I, I, I missed uh, some one one reference um, um, there, there, there's a guy who, who 
took a look uh, at, at the performance of this and uh, making a throwable on the JVM is expensive. And he measured it and he said, okay, it's about 100 function calls. Why? Because every throwable and that's baked into the JVM and, and we cannot change it because it's already in throwable itself. Um, collects the entire stack info to throw it with um, with the exception. And so this is an expensive operation to make this non-local um, exit um, transfer of control. Um, of course, there are also ways around that because I think uh, okay, I can ima could imagine that you just uh, make an, a throwable pool uh, where you do not construct extra throwables, but you already have pre-constructed ones. But anyway, um, another option would be a protocol. There are quite a few libraries already that do um, uh, something like NOM, uh, but on the basis of a protocol. And a protocol is yeah, almost a classic way to make things extensible in Clojure. Uh, uh, for example, failure, which I think um, has some popularity, um, has this kind of protocol, which is um, has failed, and it can extend um, this protocol to nil and object, and say, okay, um, this is not failed because it's something else, and it can extend to exception and say, okay, an exception, yeah, okay, that's a fail. Uh, that's, that has failed. And of course, uh, to their own construct, which is a failure, which implements this um, uh, protocol, and um, which is also um, has failed. And while this is um, nice, yeah, it's very nice, you can already see, okay, nil and object, okay, but what about other primitive types? Int or Boolean. Um, not sure. Um, and you cannot extend this to cognitive normalities because those are just maps. You would have to say, okay, wait, um, okay, you can extend it to cognitive normalities actually. Yeah, you can say, oh, is this a map? Then I have to check if it has a category. But that's it. You cannot say there's another map format that I also recognize. It's uh, because you would have to put it here or you would overwrite this uh, extend protocol. And um, yeah, I think uh, it, it doesn't feel right, right? Uh, to, to have something that you can extend only to one thing, but then it blocks any similar extension. Um, And final, finally, there are pipelines, also known as um, railway-oriented programming. Uh, there are a few examples for that. Um, I, I just show two of them. Um, for example, in Rob Closure, um, <clears throat> you can use this funny little thing, um, um, which um, yeah is more or less what our nom error does. Yeah? So, so it's, uh, it takes some something in and it threads it through all these things and wraps and unwraps um, some kind of um, yeah, monad or so. Um, and um, this is great for things that are linear. Yeah? So you put something in on top and it goes through all the steps and if something goes wrong, okay, I know this is uh, a failure and so on. Um, uh, similarly, in uh, Promenade, um, we have some error handling also. Yeah? So, so you can imagine these are two rails which where uh, the train can go from one to the other. And always when you uh, have this um, um, vector in this pipeline, then you are um, handling um, the failure uh, part and in the other cases, you're handling the success part. 
Um, but um, the problem with this is it only works linearly. I couldn't write our graph example from the beginning in this style because um, I may show you like this um, because this is the same function and um, it returns something and it ret we need another thing and then we need to take these two things which are fetched with the same function and put them together so then we have a problem because if, if we add some kind of context which we put in at first and then each function just puts something at this um, context then this function will have both the same key so they would overwrite each other so we would have to have separate functions which, which actually do the same but with a different key um, and um, so, so it's not easy to write this we actually temporarily had such a construct which allowed that yeah so um, we had this kind of pipeline where we have an until and this is a predicate which checks if the context that we put in here um, is done you know so it's, it contains some key which says okay it's uh, uh, this is success or failure or it's still running and then we have additional constructs which say okay call this um call this function with these parameters but um this is actually a key from the context yeah and put the result into this key in the context and so we can put all the computation with different keys into this construct here and we have something like a let yeah, you can see okay here's a binding also a good function call that binds to this key right and then you can also of course call things that do not return or do not modify the context and then you get something else out that looks okay from this standpoint but each of these functions now they need to know i am being called with a context and i have to know okay wait i have to uh, observe a special convention yeah they look like this give me a note from the from the graph we first we have to we get only the key we have to use the key to get the actual thing from the context then we do what we actually want to do and then we modify the context and give it a generic namespaced key so that our with key can then put the thing that we put there into the actual key in the context and yeah so you see this is possible it has different conventions but it gets a bit intricate intricate in you in the usage and so you have to always have in mind that you are that you have this construct and you have to um, um, observe quite detailed um, conventions and so that's that was uh, the things that we went through um, before then settling on this non construct <clears throat> and so now i'm getting to um, to the summary um, point one is anomalies are data with all the niceties that we have there um, programming is not linear yeah? so that's the thing with pipelines pipelines are linear and programming is not linear we take things from different parts and combine them um, we want to show the happy path you know, um, we want to see what's actually happening what should happen and we do not want to see a lot of things around it which are repetitive but intricate and uh, yeah um, are a distraction from actually from what's actually happening and so 
I showed you this num toolbox to ignore anomalies. Um, as I'm now sitting here, I see that maybe I should have shown you something. How, how do we actually then uh, handle all these um, anomalies, um, which then come out from the handler? Um, well, I think I, I, I'll show you. Um, oops. Uh, we have some handler and uh, graph store uh, home ID to ID. And um, we um, have some, we call our actual function connect node, um, uh, connect nodes, um, uh, count graph from the graph store um, and the, sorry I do not have even have pi activated right now it's, it's, but, uh, oh, it's okay and um, then we can do it quite primitively because we can just uh, ask uh, if not uh, um, me, never ID then we do our status 200 and I don't know, uh, body JSON, right? And, D &D. and else we do a uh, home match uh, ID, which is an anomaly actually, then, and we have all this. Any little cases like um, uh, node missing, um, and then we return a different status, four hundred body, whatever, right? And uh, we can have uh, other things like uh, edge exists and something else. Um, so this is, uh, yeah, um, you, I, I'm constantly thinking about adding another nice construct about to this, but this is actually still quite simple. And it puts the, um, uh, the happy path first. And then we do a match, which, yeah, it's like a catch. And, uh, yeah, so that's um, still quite simple. And it's, it, I think it shows that uh, it's nice to have just data here. So um, I think we're at the end. Thank you for your attention. Um, do you have any questions?